I'm Raisa Chintami of the Indonesia channel in Jakarta and welcome to ASEAN Today, your weekly look at the dynamic Southeast Asia region. Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte welcomed eight heads of government plus Myanmar's foreign minister to the 30th ASEAN Summit in Manila on April 29th. As committed, participative and socially responsible community, it is in this light that we have signed earlier the ASEAN Declaration on the Role of the Civil Service as a catalyst for achieving the ASEAN community, Vision 2025. ASEAN celebrates its 50th anniversary this year. A second summit will take place in November alongside related meetings and a special celebration. We'll hear more from ASEAN leaders later in our Hot Seat segment. U.S. President Donald Trump is expected to attend that gathering that includes ASEAN dialogue partners. The U.S. Vice President made his debut in the region with a stop in Jakarta as part of a nation tour. And Mike Pence signed military and energy agreements worth $10 billion with Indonesia's President Joko Widodo. Pence also stopped at the ASEAN Secretariat where he met with Secretary General Le Luang Min, re-emphasizing Americans' commitment to ASEAN. Earlier this month, Indonesia welcomed another world leader to Jakarta. Afghanistan's President Ashraf Ghani came not only to discuss bilateral trade with his counterpart, but also to secure security in the region through moderate Islamic values. President Ghani visited a mosque and talked with several Muslim leaders before leaving the country. A Vietnamese cargo ship crashed into a row of riverfront houses near Thailand's capital city. The accident on April 5th took down roofs and walls, but no one was hurt. The crew of the Star 6-2 told investigators that the vessel had an electrical problem with its steering, causing it to run among the structures that line the Chao Phraya River in Samut Prakan province. Authorities allowed the ship and its crew to continue its journey to Singapore a few hours later. One of Vietnam's leading coffee exporters is working to brew up more business abroad. Coffee production has been a major source of income for Vietnam. Like many other companies in Vietnam's coffee industry, Simexco Ducluck is trying to introduce its products to more parts of the world via the Chinese market and its railway lines to Europe. The company is based in Bon Ma Tut in Ducluck province, founded in 1993. It has exported more than 1 million tons of coffee and 2,000 tons of pepper to 64 countries and territories with a total revenue of $900 million. The company started exporting coffee to China in 2007 through international trade organizations and has been dealing with China directly since 2008. Export volume has grown from a few hundred tons to an average of more than 6,000 tons since 2012. À, và cái việc cái nhu cầu cái thế hệ trẻ đang thay dần cái việc uống trà còn việc uống cà phê thì cũng rất là tốt mà hiện nay là à, cái việc mà tiêu thụ cà phê của thị trường Trung Quốc là chuộng cà phê hòa tan à, và cà phê robusta là thế mạnh của Việt Nam đang xuất khẩu lớn nhất thế giới thì là thế mạnh của cà phê hòa tan. Traditionally, Vietnamese coffee is transported to European and American markets via sea trade. Now, the railway from Kunming in southwest China's Yunnan province to Europe is opening up a new way for coffee companies to expand in western markets. With special freight trains, European customers can receive the coffee within 15 days after placing an order. Từ Trung Quốc đi tới các nước châu Âu thì đây cũng là một cái đường vận chuyển có thể giúp cà phê Việt Nam xuất qua các nước Trung Quốc và có thể là liên vận tới các nước châu Âu thì đó là một cơ hội hợp tác và phát triển được và gia tăng cái sản lượng. The Mexico has been working with Hogood Coffee, a big Chinese coffee producer based in Yunnan province. It seeks further cooperation from Chinese companies and hopes to transport its coffee to Europe through Yunnan. More ASEAN Today is coming up shortly. Regional leaders addresses cooperation and the future of ASEAN. That's ahead. You're watching ASEAN Today. I'm Raisa Chintami in Jakarta. 
Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte welcomed fellow leaders of ASEAN to Manila for the group's 30th summit. Besides ongoing regional issues, the focus was on the future of the 50-year-old group. I'd like to thank you for your presence here. It means a lot to my chairmanship. And uh, ASEAN is now at the forefront of development and plays a vital role in our region and the global arena. We must sustain the important role of ASEAN to maintain our relevance. We have achieved a critical mass to take us forward. Our economies are growing faster than most of the rest of the world. And it is expected that by 2050, the ASEAN economy will amount to over $9.2 trillion, making it the fourth largest in the world. On maritime security, we agreed to launch the Indomapi trilateral maritime patrol as soon as possible. In combating transnational crimes, we also agreed to conduct a joint working group on counter-terrorism this year. Thailand does not focus only in increasing income for our country, but we must also increase the income of other ASEAN countries because we need to be stronger together. We will not leave anyone behind. So for all the activities that we are involved in, we would like to share with you. We would like to share our experiences with you. Besides the heads of government, Myanmar was represented by Foreign Minister Aung San Suu Kyi. More ASEAN Today is coming up shortly. From the garbage dump to the art gallery, this woman's work in the Philippines is just ahead. This is ASEAN Today coming to you from Jakarta, home of the ASEAN Secretariat. A street artist who was down in the dumps in the Philippines is gaining recognition for her uplifting artwork. ASEAN Today's Wendy Wiriantini has the story. Homeless and destitute Filipino artist Jalani Matuan felt that her dream to hold an art exhibit was hopeless. But Matuan saw her dream come true when dozens of her works were displayed and an exhibition at the end of September. The artwork was sold out within a few hours and some people who attended the exhibitions asked her to sketch them there. We saw a person who had a burning desire who just needed some you know, fuel in her passion, uh, fuel meaning resources. Tori came across Matuan while walking with his friend one day on the street. Amazed at her artwork, he offered to sponsor an art exhibition for her. Matuan started painting with three crayons and a pencil she found while scavenging for food in a pile of garbage. She started selling her artwork at half a dollar a piece in order to make a living. One of her favorite things to draw is a two-faced image that reflects the kinds of people she meets on the streets, those who treat her nicely and those who turn their backs to her. <laughs> Matuan had 40 of her artworks displayed in the exhibitions, where she received a warm welcome from visitors. When Nividi Antini for ASEAN Today. Here are several events on the ASEAN calendar. The Folk Arts of Malaysia will be in display at Festival Kalate Kito in Kelantan May 5th and May 6th. The Pattaya Triathlon Super Series 2017 will be held on May 20th at Thailand's beach destination. And the Color Manila Blacklight Run is set for May 27th at Full Invest City in Alabang. Aerial tours of historic Siam Reap in Cambodia were once available only by helicopter or hot air balloons. Visitors are now able to get a different airborne experience as ASEAN Today's Fauzul Azim reports. Cambodia is reaching new heights in tourism, thanks to a small company that's offering visitors a breathtaking bird's-eye view 
of the historic Siem Reap area, including some temples in Angkor. Aero Cambodia, founded in 2010, is a small multi-purpose airline with small passenger and cargo planes and two microlight aircraft. The company received its air operator certificate from the Cambodian State Secretariat of Civil Aviation in 2014. As microlight aircraft are classified as airplanes and meet international safety standards, they operate just like any other planes. But their ability to fly as low as 700 feet offers a flying experience unlike any other. Our safety is number one here. We're operating exactly as you would if a small airline. And Aero Cambodia is a small airline. And the mic lights is just a different alternative to the other forms of uh, entertainment here. It's fun. It's like flying a motorcycle that flies. The micro light, nicknamed the flying moto by locals, takes off from Jaya Varman Airfield on the outskirts of Siem Reap. It's capable of carrying two passengers, weighing a maximum of 110 kilograms. Now this is not a boat, this is not a taxi, you know, or a bus. This is uh, one of those things where, you know, you make one mistake and you might not get a chance to make it again. The micro light can reach speeds of 100 to 120 kilometers per hour and can fly for four hours on a full tank of regular patrol. The routes all fall outside Angkor Archaeological Park with one mile exclusion zone around Angkor Wat. But there is still much to see. You see the, the, uh, the, the cattle on the ground, you wave at the people, and Eddie, the pilot here, has just got great knowledge, so he's taught me so much in the last uh, 20 minutes. <laughs> it was echt super gaaf. You go uh, omhoog and uh, you feel the wind and you feel as if you're flying, bent, as if yourself can fly. And um, is, you see the temples. It's super gaaf om uh, ook de mensen op de op het land te zien werken. En je, je kan naar beneden gaan en je, je gaat weer omhoog. Het is uh, ja echt fantastische fantastische ervaring. At fifty dollars per flight, tourists will be flying for fifteen minutes and there are various pre-plane routes to choose from. Fawzul Azim for ASEAN Today. We like hearing from you throughout the ASEAN region and the world. Mia in Indonesia posted this on our Facebook page, Keep the Peace for ASEAN Member States. That's a timely message as leaders gathered in Manila. Thank you, Mia. All of our episodes are posted on YouTube, so check us out there if you can't find us on your local TV channel. Then let us know what you're thinking about or what you want to see on the program. Email us at ASEANtodayTV at gmail.com, post something on our Facebook page, or tweet us at, at ASEANtodayTV. Voters in Jakarta rejected a new term for the city's first Chinese Christian leader. April 19th election results showed former Education Minister Anis Baswedan winning nearly 60% of the vote. The incumbent Basuki Chahya Purnama had been elevated to the top job when his boss Joko Widodo won the presidency in 2014. Analysts say the capital may not be ready to elect a non-Muslim leader in a country that's 90% Muslim. And that's ASEAN Today for this week. I'm Raisa Chantami of the Indonesia Channel in Jakarta. Terima kasih. Please join us again next time.